I, I was quite struck by the speech and language representative, therapist yeah. representative, um, where he was saying that the current model isn't working, that he believes that because, as you quite rightly identified, um, additional support needs has got a wide spectrum of things. And you can't expect teachers to know absolutely everything about every single specialism. So you need experts to come in to help you with those pupils. But then you gain knowledge from that. But he was saying that their involvement in the class is much less than it, than it used to be. Do you think that kind of specialist input from what you've seen is at the right level just now? Um, from what I've seen, well, it, it's difficult to say because, of course, as Mr Rennie will know, it will look different in his constituency than it might in other parts of the country. And I think one of the things I grapple with as Education Secretary is the variance across the system that we see school by school, local authority by local authority. So it's quite difficult to give a monolithic answer to say, yes, it's, it's not good enough and we need to improve it. I mean, I broadly would support that, but let's get into some of the detail here, because in some schools there might be excellent speech and language provision. In other areas, there might have been reductions, and we need to reflect that in government and ensure, actually, that if that has been the decision of the local authority, well, where is the support then for the, the children and young people there? One of the things I was struck by as well last year, and the committee will recall, we published data on speech and language delays, actually, in some of our youngest, so zero to two, um, and our poorest citizens from the lowest socioeconomic backgrounds. There are real challenges post-pandemic with these young people coming back into formal education, whether that's ELC and then progressing, obviously, into primary school. So I think you touched on a really important point. Uh, what we have been able to do specifically in relation to speech and language is to put investment into Education Scotland. So we have a team now that are working to support that at national level. And uh, they go out and they can provide that support that Mr Rennie speaks to. But there's only so many of them. And we need to upskill, I think, and support the profession. But also we need to recognise the role of local government. So that goes to Mr Kerr's point as well. This can't just be a, a government-only endeavour. I really want COSLA, for example, to be part of building the new Centre for Teaching Excellence. I want them to have buy-in in it. I think that could have an offer to the profession, but it could also give an offer, I think, to our young people with additional support needs.